Thanks for coming back to watch lesson 7.2. We're talking about sequences today. But before we do that, there's a few definitions I'd like to quickly review with you. For those of you taking pre calc 12 honors with me, we actually haven't done this factorial notation stuff yet. It's in the chapter 11 videos. I think it's 11.1 part 1. So if you want to check that out to get a more detailed description of what we're going to talk about, at least on the first page here, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, the only thing I want you to understand is this new notation. It's called N. No. N. No. N. No, no. It's called N with an exclamation mark. That exclamation mark is the word factorial in math. So what does N factorial mean? Well, if I give you the number 5 factorial, that's actually just 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So do you see where that definition comes from? We start with that number, and we multiply by every whole number before it until 1. So if I give you 10 factorial, that'd be 10 times 9 times 8 times blah, 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 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay? You, you won't really need this for our notes today, but when you do the questions from the workbook, you'll see a lot that involve factorials. Alright, how do you simplify factorials? Well, notice the idea of n plus 2 factorial means we start with the number n plus 2. We write every whole number before it. So that would be n plus 1, because we subtract 1. We'll subtract 1 more, which just gives you n. And then we have n minus 1, n minus 2, and so on and so forth. Okay, All the way to 3, 2, 1. Well, n factorial is the same idea, right? Starting with n multiplying by the number before it, and you keep doing that, 3, 2, 1. Since this is a division question, notice these all divide out, and you're just left with mm -hmm, n plus 2 times n plus 1, and you can expand that if you wish, n squared plus 3n plus 2, and that's what this expression is equal to. All right? So let's turn the page, and we're going to begin our ideas of the sequences in calculus. And really, I hope you remember that a sequence is just an ordered list of numbers. Okay? doesn't have to be always going up or always going down. It's just an ordered list of numbers. So let's look at these examples here. And it says, write out the first five sequences. And notice this notation with the squiggly bracket just represents all the terms in the sequence. And what this says is that all the terms in the sequence are given by a particular formula. A stands for the term in the sequence. So if I want to write out the first term, that's A1, I would just plug in 1 wherever I see N. So 1 plus 1 plus 1, that's just 1 half. I can do the next one, the second one. That means I replace n with 2, so 2 plus 1, that's 2 thirds. I think you get the idea now, so can you try to find the third one, the fourth one, and then the fifth one yourself? Okay, and there you have it. They are the first five terms of your sequence, a sub n. Now, some sequences are given by a formula. Other sequences are given by a recursive definition, meaning you need to know what happened previously in order to get the next term. And so they always have to give you some sort of starting value. So they told you the first term is 5. And notice this formula or this instruction. AK plus 1 means it's the next term. And the next term is equal to 3 times the current term. That's AK plus 4. What do I mean by that? Well, if the next term is a sub 2, that means the k value is 1. Can you see that? k plus 1 is equal to 2, so k equals to 1. So therefore, a sub 2 is equal to 3a sub k, remember k is equal to 1, plus 4. So we're saying the second term is equal to 3 multiplied by the first term, and the first term's value is just 5. So 3 times 5 is 15 plus 4, that means our second term is 19. And in order to get the third term, we have to now know the th second term. So a k plus 1, that's 3 now. So k plus 1 becomes 3. Therefore, k value is now 2. So notice what I'm saying is the third term is equal to 3 times 
the value of the second term plus 4. So once again, it's recursively being created because you need to know the previous term. Previous term is 19. 3 times 19 is 57 plus 4 is 61. Okay. I'll show you to you one more time, and then I'll ask you to do A5 on your own. So A sub 4 is just 3 times A sub 3 plus 4. 3 times the value of the third term, which is 61, plus 4. 3 times 61, that's 183, plus 4 is 187. Okay? And you please try A5 yourself. Just quickly pause the video, go ahead and try it yourself, and come back and check your answer. Pause. Unpause. I hope you got 565. Now, sometimes I'll ask you to actually write out the recursive definition. So I want you to create the formula for me based on the term in the sequence. And so if I gave you that the first term was 1, and we always had to start with that, how do I get the next term from the first? Ah, uh, yes, timesing by negative 3. Now, does that rule work for every single other one? So going from the first term to the next term, I multiply by negative 3. Going from the second term to the third term, do I also multiply by negative 3? Yes. How about the third to the fourth? Yes. How about the fourth to the fifth? Yes. So notice that if I want to get the next term, which is k plus 1, I'm going to take the previous term, that's a sub k, and multiply it by negative 3. So our recursive definition is this, but don't forget we also need to include a starting value. So those two pieces combined together give me my recursive definition for the sequence 2, negative 6, 18, negative 54, and 162. Now, hmm, numero 5. You might be thinking, hey, 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 Mr. Lee, that sequence, okay, that sequence we just did, number four. By the way, it says write an expression for the nth term of the sequence. So what I'm talking about when I talk about sequence is this one over here. Okay? You might have thought, hey, I've seen sequences like this before. We're just multiplying by a ratio. Can you think back to good old days of pre-calc 11? When we did sequences and series. What type of sequence is this? We learned two types. Arithmetic or geometric? Vote now. 50-50 chance. Mm-hmm. This was the geometric one. This is a geometric sequence. Why is it a geometric sequence? Because you are multiplying by a common ratio. So don't know if you remember the actual formula. We use something like this, t sub n equals to the first term, t sub 1, times r to the power of n minus 1. In this case, I'm not going to use t sub n, I want to use a, calculus like to use a for the term, so a sub n. t sub 1 is the first term, we know that's 2 from the sequence, and our common ratio is just the value of negative 3, and we're going to raise this to the power of n minus 1. So notice that previous sequence can be thought of as a recursive sequence, or it could be also thought of as a geometric sequence. Wow. So remember back in the previous section when we did improper integrals, we kind of talked about that idea of diverging or sequences or improper integrals diverging. Well, now we're going to talk about diverging or divergent sequences and also its counterpart, the convergent or convergence of a sequence. So what I'm saying here is if I've got a whole bunch of numbers in a sequence, okay, so a sub n is just a representation of a sequence. And the key thing is the limit as n approach to infinity of a sub n, meaning if you look at the largest term in the sequence, so like the one trillionth, billionth, millionth, gazillionth term, if that equals to a number l, then l is the limit of the sequence and it converges. It's a value. It's a number, so it converges. So, as an example, let's look at number 6. 
it says find the limit of this sequence b sub n okay so b is just a notation for the sequence and then it's given by this formula n over 1 minus 2 over n so now what i'm saying to you is hey let's go ahead and plug in n approach to infinity of the sequence which is really the limit as n approach to infinity of n over 1 minus 2n we've done these before back from chapter 1 yeah a long time ago right chapter 1 notice I can do the n behavior model EBM n behavior model which means I'm just gonna have here the limit of n approach to infinity of n over negative 2n those n's cancel out I just have a negative half so notice in this case the limit the largest value is negative half and therefore because I know the largest value is a number this series must converge so this converges so if the limit does not exist meaning it goes to infinity or near infinity then the sequence does not have a limit and therefore it diverges okay so for 7 and 8, I'd like you to try to see if the sequences converge or diverge, okay? And of course, if they do converge, you should be able to find the limit. All right? So I want you to try this yourself first. Why don't you pause the video, give yourself a few minutes, try it, then come back and double check. This is an interesting sequence because now we have 1 to the power of n. That either becomes positive 1 or negative 1. So if I were to actually write out the terms of my sequence, the first term would be n equals to 1. So negative 1 to the power of 1 is negative 1. 3 plus negative 1 is actually 2. So my first number here is actually 2. And then if I have n being 2 now, negative 1 squared is positive 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. And notice that just goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, forever. Can you tell me what happens when I ask about the limit as n approach to infinity now of the sequence? Can you tell me if this is a number? I guess you could. It looks like it's either 2 or 4. But which one is it? Don't tell me it's the average of 3. It's not. And because you can't signify this as one particular number, therefore, this sequence diverges. Alright, number 8. You can plug numbers in, but once again, I'm looking for what happens when n approaches to infinity of the function. Natural log of n squared all over n. Remember those rules for natural logs or logarithms? Exponents you can bring down to the front. So 2 ln n over n. And then remember how we talked about relative growth rates to infinity? I think back in the section on L'Hopital's rule in 6.6's lesson. Well, which grows bigger, natural log of n or n? And I hope you remember the relative growth rate of n is bigger. So that dominates. So therefore, something divided by big number, that just becomes like 0, right? I shouldn't say it's 1, but something divided by infinity is still going to be 0. And therefore, because it's equal to 0, we say that the sequence converges. Two more terms here. The sequence is monotonic if it is non-increasing. That means it's decreasing. <laughs> or non-decreasing, meaning it's either increasing or staying flat. Okay? It's not and, okay? It's this or. So it's either kind of increasing or flat or decreasing or flat. Okay? That's monotonic. The sequence is bounded, however. This new term, bounded. If every term is greater than or equal to some number n, which is what we call the lower bound. So... I would say a sequence is bounded below if there's some lower number that it can't be lower than, which is n. And also, every term is less than or equal to some number n, upper bound. So imagine the numbers, you know, b 
being bounded below by n and above by m, meaning all the sequence values have to be in between these two values. And if that can be said, then this is what we call a bounded sequence. So, I'd like you to try 9, 10, 11, and 12. See if you can tell me if, first of all, it's monotonic, and then tell me if it's bounded. All right? And a quick strategy for these is sometimes just to write out the first few terms to just see the pattern and then determine if they're monotonic or not, and if they're bounded or not. Okay? Once again, I'm going to let you try this on your own. I'd like you to pause. Pause. And then try these. And then come back and check your answers. Okay? See you in a bit. I already know what this one is, right? This is 2, 4, 2, 4. Looks like there's a upper and lower bound, so this is bounded for sure, right? Uh, monotonic? No way. It goes back and forth, back and forth. So not monotonic. Writing out our first few terms for this lovely sequence. Hmm. 2 over 2 is 1. Let's see, 2 times 2 is 4. 4 over 3. 6 over 4, 8 over 5, 10 over 6. This does seem to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and it always seems to be increasing, so I believe this is monotonic. Is this bounded? Yeah, I would say so, because it looks like it's bounded below. And if you take the limit as n approach to infinity, Remember this idea of the n behavior model, 2 over n over n, that just equals to 2. So notice the upper limit is 2, the lower limit is 1. I shouldn't say limit. The upper, I guess I'd say the upper bound, I should say. The upper bound of the sequence is 2, the lower bound of the sequence is 1, so therefore it's bounded. Okay, next page. Two more. Did you not see that there were two more on the previous page, or the next page? Don't be so lazy. Well, quickly do these right now if you didn't do them earlier. I hope you can say this one is monotonic. I can see it's always decreasing. It's bounded above by the number 1. And if I take the limit as an approach to infinity, this is bounded below by the number zero. So yeah, it's bounded. And finally, the last one. Let me just plug the numbers. One half, four thirds, I believe. Nine fourths. Sixteen over five. This seems to be monotonic. It's increasing. And... Hmm, what happens if I go to infinity? Remember the limit as n approach to infinity of n squared over n, that's just equal to n. And that's just infinity, so it's unbounded at the top, so therefore, even though it's bounded below, it's not bounded above. So unbounded. Okay. Got some new terms underneath your belt. Sounds good. It's time to practice. See you in class.